how did I not know this before? Action. So there are literally thousands of directing techniques. After university, I felt like I hadn't actually scratched the surface of film. And well, I made a short film that may or may not have lived up to my expectations. And after that, I felt quite lost. I only started to make better films and win awards once I started learning the techniques other directors have used that I was never taught. So today I'm going to reveal what I believe to be three brilliant but simple techniques Rian Johnson used in Knives Out Glass Onion that no one has ever taught you and I'll hopefully finish building whatever this is. The edges of your frame are not rigid. I love you Bertie. I love you too Claire. Many films have tinkered with the shape of the frame from mm. Robert Eggers' Lighthouse to Taylor Swift's music video style. However, we're told not to split the frame because, well, there is a danger that you can confuse the audience with lots of different things happening at the same time. Over here. Over oh, here. Yeah. Confusing, right? But Rian Johnson has a trick or two up his sleeve to make this technique work beautifully. First of all, you need a reason to use this technique, much like any film technique, to be honest. You could show how different two characters are, like in Hobbs and Shaw, or you may want to show everyone on a phone conversation like Rian Johnson did in Glass Onion. But how do you avoid that confusion? Here are three clips. Pick out which one works best for you. probably found the third video the easiest to follow. And here's why. The first video confuses the audience by having many things happening all at the same time. And the second video doesn't work well because the movements between the divided screens don't flow in the same direction. The final shot works well because each moment leads to the next moment naturally without making us feel like we will miss something if we watch one of the screens over the others. And the screen direction makes it easier for us to follow what's happening. So the rule is, your audience can only look at one thing at a time. Most of us are told how exposition is the worst thing in the world and it will kill your film. So what is bad exposition? Well, it tends to be when one character tells another character and the audience something they already know. This can be just boring or at worst, downright infuriating. Which of these do you prefer? So we have to find all of the right pieces in the right order and then we have to make something from it. Yeah. So we have a manual. We have a major problem. There are five pieces missing. Are you even listening? So why was the second clip better? Well, in the first clip, I delivered information to both the second character and you, the audience, that you already knew. The second clip worked better because I added new information to the story. Rian Johnson does this in the brilliant puzzle box scene in Glass Onion by having each character learn about the box at the same time as the audience. We don't feel like the characters are exclaiming facts and ideas in bad exposition because the sharing of knowledge here is motivated and interesting. We're told, don't forget to use metaphors in your film. But do we even get told how to do that? You see, you can use almost anything as a metaphor. It could be the whole film or a prop, or in the Glass Onions case, the title of the film is also a metaphor, which also informs many of the locations and prop choices throughout the movie. It's like an actual huge glass onion. Onions are used as a metaphor for peeling layers of information back and revealing more underneath. You get it, we both have layers. <sighs> If you had an actual glass onion, well, you needn't really peel any of those layers because they're already visible. So Rian is saying without saying that this mystery is far simpler than it looks. And that really is the metaphor of the glass onion. Look into the clear center of this glass 
onion. What's brilliant about metaphors is that quite often they're entirely invisible to the audience. In fact, this episode, for example, without realizing I used Lego as a metaphor right at the start of the episode. The many Lego pieces help me explore the feeling of being overwhelmed by the sheer amount of directing techniques out there. Without this, I would have just been talking to you in the hope that you get what I mean. You can create powerful metaphors with almost anything. The sky is the limit. Knowing what a metaphor is, is great, but seeing a master use it is even better. Check out my episode on the use of metaphors in Parasite here. Now get out there and direct something.